My Fusion System, Fusing a Thousand Chickens at the Start Chapter 141, Turn-Based Game What? What kind of magic is that? In the direction of the Mage Guild A mage felt the rapidly approaching cold wave and stared blankly at the ice corridor that appeared in the sky. He took a deep breath, and when he exhaled again, he could see his breath. Then, his body turned into a snow-white ice sculpture, there was not a hint of pain on his face because his life had ended before he could react. Everyone, quickly, use fire elemental magic. When they saw their companions turned into that state, the other mages quickly reacted. They immediately raised their staffs and began to chant, Fire elements that wander between heaven and earth, please listen to my summon and condense into fireballs that can shatter the earth. Silver tier magic, consecutive exploding fireballs. They had summoned fireballs the size of a wash basin. It split from one into dozens of balls, each surrounded by purple flames, and shot forward in an attempt to block the incoming cold wave. However, something shocking happened, after the fireballs entered the cold wave's range, they were immediately frozen into ice cubes. That was the first time everyone had seen a frozen flame, and they were all dumbfounded. Audrey and Ron were the only ones who could maintain their composure in the crowd. Audrey reached out and touched her cheek as she muttered softly, Pride is a great sin mask. I'll activate my immunity ability. Her originally beautiful face suddenly changed as her face rippled like water. As the leader of the Demonis Bandits gang, Pride had her own mask. She did not usually wear it because her mask was transparent. As the head of the Seven Deadly Sins and the strongest original sin, Audrey had two powers judgment and immunity. For judgment if she decided that the other party was guilty, then a single touch would injure the other party, they would suffer great pain, no matter who they were. As for the immunity ability that she wanted to use, it allowed her to be immune to any non-fatal injuries. Damn it, I can't participate in that kind of battle at all. It's good enough that I can protect myself wolf transformation. On the other side, Ron also had his way of preserving his life. He stabbed the long blue knife in his hand into the earth and laid flat on the ground. The muscles on his body expanded under his ferocious expression, first, they grew bigger, and then silver white fur appeared on his skin. In just a minute, he had transformed from a human into a giant wolf. He was a few meters long, and his ice blue eyes were filled with indifference. The cold current that washed over him was repelled by the fur on his body. Ron could transform into an ice field magic wolf because he was a demi human. He was immune to high tier frost magic. The two leaders had their own methods to survive the fight, but the rest of their followers were not so lucky. Twenty mages who stood at the front held their staff as they prepared to cast fire magic to ward off the cold. However, they were frozen in ice sculptures before they could do that. Even the mercenaries who were responsible for guarding them were turned into popsicles. The ancient flame illuminates the world, the scorching sun dispels the eternal night. Great God of Fire, I am Antonio, and I sincerely pray to you, please grant me the power to burn the world and everything in it. Platinum Tier Fire Elemental Magic, Sun Disk The astrologer's beard fluttered in the wind as he cast an Earth Elemental Platinum Tier spell with one hand and summoned a rock giant to replace the previous one that had been frozen into a giant block of ice. He fought with the primordial Demonis as he raised his staff with the other hand and activated the Platinum Tier Fire Elemental spell. The Golden Flash's Absolute Zero spell was a fusion spell, and it was a superior variant of ice a fire element. The essence of a fire element was to control temperature. The fire was to raise the temperature, and ice was to lower it. After the astrologer released the spell, a huge disk phantom appeared behind him, it continued to rotate. If one looked carefully, one would see that that disk was engraved with countless tiny magic runes. The overall composition was the same as the real sun, it emitted a high temperature that melted everything. Ice and Fire The extreme temperature and absolute zero collided it instantly distorted the space and created a massive explosion. The area within a hundred meter radius of the astrologer's feet was swept flat, and the entire ground dropped by a centimeter. 
the mercenaries and mages nearby were all thrown backward. Those who were lucky enough to put up a magic barrier or combat or a shield in advance could still keep their lives, those who were unlucky exploded into a bloody mist in mid-air. Boom! A huge mushroom cloud rose from the ground. The two giants that were fighting each other, the primordial demonist's projection and the huge rock giant, were separated due to the explosion. The astrologer stood in the center of the explosion, he wiped his darkened face as he panted heavily and complained in a low voice. I have to admit, I have been staying in the temple of the stars for too long. My strength had deteriorated. I didn't have such a difficult time when casting two platinum tear spells in the past. The explosion had injured him slightly. The mages and the mercenaries focused their attention on him, he could not lose his dignity in front of them as he was the most respected mage in the kingdom. He used his staff to summon some water to wash the black stains off his face. Then, he endured his fatigue to cast another spell at the Black Moon Castle in the distance. Platinum Tier Water Elemental Spell, Sky River Arrow Rain Another heavy rain of arrows rained from Black Moon Castle's skyline. However, his opponent would not be outdone. The Golden Flash roared and spat out nine thick light pillars. It was the Platinum Tier Spell 9th level blazing heavenly dragon breath. It swept across the earth and left a long ditch in its wake, it also took a few mercenaries and mages who could not dodge it in time. Platinum Tier Fire Elemental Spell, Sun Disk. Platinum Tier Ice Elemental Spell, Absolute Zero. Platinum Tier Dark Elemental Spell, Black Hole. Gold Tier Spell, Consecutive Bullets. Petrification Magic Eye. Death Ray, Humanoid Auto Mine Giant. One spell after another boomed across the area. They collided with each other and lit up the sky, but the sound continued to boom. Audrey. Ron had transformed into an ice field wolf. His beautiful fur fluttered in the wind as his narrow eyes stared into the distance. His fanged mouth said, What are we doing here? He was there because Audrey had promised to hire him to protect the mages with a large sum of money. He did not think that the battle with Black Moon Castle would be that intense. Even if it were to get serious, hundreds of people would have rushed at the other group as they shouted and fought against each other, they would see a sea of blood. However, with the astrologer, it seemed like a different kind of battle. The astrologer and the mysterious Platinum Tear Mage in Black Moon Castle had been fighting with Platinum Tear spells since the beginning. One of them would cast a spell and the other would respond in kind. It was like a turn-based game, it was very harmonious. However, there was a problem with that. Ron did not know how many people Black Moon Castle had lost. Half of the people he had brought with him were almost dead. He had wanted to show off his manly charm in front of Audrey, so he had brought all his elites, all of them were bronze-tier warriors, and there were a few silver-tier warriors among them. Captain Ron, save me. I don't want to die yet. Screams continued to echo from behind them. There was no difference if they were bronze or silver tier in that battle. They could only try to hold on to something so that they would not be sent flying backward. If they did, those violent energy fluctuations would kill them. They would be fine if they were careful with the aftershocks of the battle. However, the primordial demoness projection, who was fighting against the rock giant, occasionally glanced at them. A few of his subordinates would be petrified, and the rock giant would also accidentally step on his men during the battle. No matter how strong the astrologer's men were, they would not be able to keep everyone safe under such circumstances. Ron looked at the scene behind him, he felt somewhat helpless. If it were not for the astrologer who had cast the spell, he would have cursed too. Did they mean to kill those from Black Moon Castle or his men? He wondered if Audrey was unhappy with him, perhaps she had joined forces with the astrologer to destroy his forces in Monty Town. Chapter 142, Lord Astrologer, Stop! Ron, what do you mean? Audrey turned around when she heard Ron's question. I mean what I asked. Audrey, I want to know why we are here. Ron who had transformed into a giant wolf, asked as drool dripped down his teeth. 
If we're here to destroy Black Moon Castle, then Lord Astrologer can do that by himself. There's no need for us at all. If you're just using this as an excuse to get rid of me, then forget it. Audrey frowned, she was displeased to hear the apparent resentment in Ron's words. Did she need the astrologer to attack Ron? She could have done it herself. Ron was only a pawn, he was nothing. Of course, she understood why he was angry with her. Audrey looked behind her. A bronze tier water elemental mage from the mage guild cast a wave-shaped magical barrier around his body. However, rocks flew everywhere when the primordial demoness and the rock giant fought in the distance. It pierced through the mage's magical barrier and broke his body into pieces. Some of the mages had gathered to release a combination spell to teleport themselves to a safe place. However, before they could even look at each other and rejoice, some other spells blasted their location. Similar situations happened everywhere on the battlefield. The astrologer and the mysterious platinum tier elite had already used their full strength, so there was no need to worry about them anymore. Fortunately, a few mage guild elders that she had brought with her were still safe and sound. President Audrey, what should we do next? A few mages, led by her vice president, were surrounded by different spells. They divided their tasks and worked together to reverse the spells from the battle. The vice president was trained in fire elemental magic, and Anna was in charge of blasting the spells. The two of them held their wands in their hands as fireballs the size of human heads constantly tore out of their wands and crushed things like stones and light waves. As for Hilbert, who was known as the unbreakable barrier, he stuck his armor-covered hands into the ground. Then, two thick walls and other things rose from the earth. Things continued to hit the wall, and they could hear the loud sound when they struck it. However, the wall did not break. A few mages continued to cast spells as they asked Audrey with a wry smile. Just a day ago, they thought it would be a good idea to fight against evil forces with the astrologer. If they could choose again, they would rather stay in the mage guild and take a nap than go there. At least they would not die if they had stayed in the mage guild. Be careful. I'll handle that. After a moment of silence, Audrey walked silently to the astrologer, who was still casting his spells. Lord Astrologer, should we change our battle plan? I understand that you're powerful, but it's a little difficult for me and my subordinates to endure such a high-intensity battle. This isn't a high-intensity battle. As the Astrologer spoke, he wiped his sweat discreetly and glanced around him. But, of course, Audrey, you're different from me. I haven't been outside in a long time, so I got a little carried away in my excitement. I almost forgot that you can't help in such a battle yet. Yes, there's no point in continuing to bombard our opponent with more spells. I will do as you suggested and change our battle plan. The astrologer was already tired. However, he could not stop because of his arrogance. He had planned to cast a spell and pressure his opponent into acknowledging his strength. He did not expect that the other party would not be afraid of him, they even fought with him. I wonder how that mysterious elite, who created new magical elements, has such a strong endurance. We have been fighting for so long, but he still hasn't used the new type of magic yet. Have I gotten so old? The astrologer stroked his beard, he felt a little disappointed. Then, he waved his staff and wrote four huge words in the air. Temporary truce. Those four huge words could be seen no matter how far away anyone was. Each word was made up of glittering golden light, they looked majestic. The astrologer had used his ability to change the layout of magical elements to form those words. After he wrote those words, magic from both sides immediately stopped at the same time. The astrologer looked at Audrey and said, You sound like you have a plan. Tell me about them. Lord Astrologer, my idea is very simple. You will be responsible for restraining the enemy's platinum tier elite while we sneak into Black Moon Castle. We'll capture the castle owner or perhaps their family, and I believe that the elite will surrender. The castle will not have that many platinum tier elites, Audrey said before she cleared her throat. Her thoughts had been different from her words, 
but she would do anything as long as she could get the astrologer to stop the fight with the platinum tier elite. Hmm, that's a good idea. The astrologer stroked his beard, he was about to nod when someone exclaimed from behind him. Look, there are a few words in the distance. Can you see what's that? It seems to be. What? The people from Black Moon Castle are too daring. The astrologer looked into the sky and saw a row of words above Black Moon Castle. It seemed like they were formed by water elemental magic. Who are you? Why should I listen to you? The astrologer's mouth twitched. That was the first time that someone had dared to speak to him like that. I am an astrologer. The astrologer waved his hand and wrote in the sky. The other side quickly responded. Who cares what you are, are you still going to fight? If you are not going to fight, then quickly kneel and admit your mistake. Make up for Black Moon Castle's loss. Maybe I can let you off if I am in a good mood. Such big words. The astrologer was so angry that he sneered. Then he wrote in the sky again. You were not even born yet when I roamed the kingdom. Such big words, be careful that you can't act on it later. Just one answer are you going to fight or not? I stopped the fight for everyone's sake. I do not like killing, you should thank me for my mercy. If I had not shown mercy, your place would be a pile of ashes now. Cut the crap, I'm asking if you want to fight or not. F asterisk CK The veins on the astrologer's forehead throbbed. He had lived for hundreds of years, and he was a very cultured person. However, he could not stand the other party's repeated provocations, especially in front of a group of outsiders. They might think that he could not put up a fight, he might lose his dignity. Even if I have to die here today and my magic power exhausted, I will bombard Black Moon Castle with spells until there is nothing left. Platinum Tear Spell The astrologer raised his staff, he was about to chant a spell when two people rushed forward and hugged his arms. Lord Astrologer, that's enough. Let us do our part. Audrey hugged his left hand as the corners of her mouth twitched. Forget it, Lord Astrologer. You are too noble to mess with those ignorant men from Black Moon Castle. How demeaning. Let us help you with this problem. Ron hugged the older man's right arm, his face had twitched as well. It was not only the two of them. The other men also looked at the astrologer with pitiful eyes. They said in unison, Yes, please, stop this fight. We can't let you be the only person to fight in this battle. It's our turn. They did not want the astrologer to start the fight again, they wanted to live for a few more days. Chapter 143, Over My Dead Body Black Moon Castle Gauze, clear water and medicinal herbs that can treat external injuries, be quick. The maids attended to the knight's injuries in the hall. More than ten knights were laid on the clean and spacious floor. Some of them suffered from broken limbs, while others were covered in blood. They were weak, so the maids had to support them. They bandaged the knight's hands and feet and fed them medicinal herb soup. Those knights had been affected by the spells used in the battle. It might be a little painful later. Bear with it for a while. Wendy was cleaning the wounds of a newly recruited knight. Since he was still new, he was only a bronze tier warrior. He could only fly with the wings that he had obtained after his phoenix bloodline was awakened. Therefore, his injuries were relatively serious. A fragment of a blade was embedded in his chest. That had happened when the silver tier weapon in his hand shattered as he fought against the platinum tier spell. The shrapnel had struck his body instead. Wendy's voice was gentle, but the knight was still in so much pain that he broke out in a cold sweat. However, he nodded and kept quiet. He allowed Wendy to pull out the blade from his chest. She ground a gold tier medicinal herb into powder before she sprinkled them on his chest. As the gold tier medicinal herb touched his flesh, his injuries immediately healed. A few minutes later, new skin had appeared on that wound. The knight was still on the floor, he closed his eyes as he tried to recover his combat aura. He knew that he would have to join the battle later. As he waited for his injuries to recover, 
more wounded people were sent into the hall, and more recovered patients were sent away. More than ten minutes had passed since the start of the battle. The entire Black Moon Castle was on the verge of collapse as it had endured several rounds of platinum tier spells. It would have collapsed if it were not for the sturdy materials that built it. Sloth stood in the corner of the hall. Hey, Sloth, don't just stand there. Come here and help. Lust had an excellent quality medicinal herb in her hand, and she mashed it before she applied it onto a knight's injured leg. That knight was injured, but he did not feel any pain. Instead, he stared at Lust as if he had been mesmerized. Sloth hovered in midair as she held a pillow in her arms. When she heard Lust's voice, her white eyelashes fluttered. Then, she stretched her hand before dozens of invisible hands stretched out from behind her each one had a task. Half of her arms helped to massage the knight in front of her, while the other half worked on the medicinal herbs before she applied them on several knights nearby. Greed, please use the money enhancement spell to strengthen their bodies, Lust said again. Greed, who stood nearby, tossed a coin in her hand, but she did not move. Lust, you are working so hard, do you really think you are a member of the Black Moon Castle? Lust looked up coldly. What do you mean? I'm just a little suspicious. Have you forgotten our purpose? Which purpose are you referring to? For example, to investigate why the Great Sin Mask was fused? And after getting enough information, we'll escape from here. That's right. I think now is a good time to escape. Wrath's giant form walked into the room from outside, she carried five to size black moon knights on her shoulder. She placed them carefully on the ground before she shrunk her body back to her normal size and went toward her companions. You may not know this, but Pride has found help from one of the most powerful mages in the kingdom, the astrologer. Now, Black Moon Castle has no time to take care of itself. The continuous injuries of their Black Moon Knights are proof of that. We can kill them while they are wounded. Wrath lowered her voice subconsciously and made a gesture of cutting her throat. Then, we will capture Watson's siblings and his parents and force him to stop, hand over the mask, and submit to us. That way, everything in the castle will belong to us. As Wrath spoke, Sloth dropped from the sky and reached out to touch her head, Wrath was unhappy about that. Sloth, what are you doing? One can only dream when one is asleep at night. It's daytime now. What are you saying? Wrath, don't get so agitated. Sloth is right. Your thoughts are a little whimsical. Greed said. She waved her hand as she held a gold coin in it. Since Watson dares to leave us here, He's not afraid of us betraying him. If we cause trouble now, he'll kill us. So, we just need to steal something. I saw them take out all the medicinal herbs, including the bronze tear crystal wheat, to treat the injured soldiers. Each of those medicinal herbs is very expensive. If we can steal a few thousand of them, we can offset the Demonis Bandit Gang's loss. There were tens of thousands of herbs in Black Moon Castle. It should not be too obvious if they only take one-tenth of them. That's a good idea. The other girls nodded. Just as they were about to agree, a cold voice echoed. What a bunch of idiots. Envy, who told you to eavesdrop on our conversation. Also, how are we idiots? Envy held a mop in her hand, she was cleaning the blood stains on the floor. She paused her task as she heard their conversation. You're all too short-sighted. That's all you can do for the rest of your lives, being a bandit is the highlight in your life. Envy, everyone has their own ideas. We didn't even say anything when you betrayed us. I'm warning you now, don't make this personal. Wrath was the first one to be unhappy about that. Make this personal? Do you think you are worthy? Envy seemed disdainful as she looked at them. Take a good look around you, these people are fighting to their deaths for Black Moon Castle. And to repay them, Black Moon Castle is willing to use up all of their medicinal herbs. But you guys are thinking about how to steal these herbs? Don't you know if you take them, then the knights will die, 
and the castle will be destroyed. What does that have to do with us? Wrath was indifferent about it. She was a member of the Demonis Bandit Gang, so naturally, Black Moon Castle was her enemy. It would be great if her enemies were destroyed. Wait, let her continue. Lust seemed to have thought of something, she pulled Wrath back. Envy asked, what has always been the purpose of the Demonis Bandit Gang? To revive the Demonis Church and restructure the Great Sin Mask. Do you need to ask that? But have we done it? No Wrath looked impatient. Envy, what are you trying to say? I do not understand why the Demonis Bandit Gang couldn't revive the Demonis Church even though we have been dormant for more than ten years. After Black Moon Castle destroyed us, and after watching the battle here today, I finally understand that our defeat was not without reason. Envy felt emotional. She used to be Queen Avril's personal guard and had the honor of hearing some of the king's speeches. The king of the Holy Dragon Kingdom once said something that left a deep impression on her. An army without cohesion is just a pile of loose sand. Rather than using loose sand to build a tower, it's better to throw them away. She finally knew that the Demonis Bandit Gang was only a pile of loose sand. Everyone had ulterior motives for their own benefit and for the sake of fighting for the ownership of the Great Sin Mask. Black Moon Castle is different from the Demonis Bandit Gang. The master here will spare no effort to help his subordinates. Compared to winning, he values the safety of his subordinates more. The guards here also trust their master unconditionally because they know who gave them everything. Can the Demonis Bandit Gang do it? Envy asked her companions. If the Demonis Bandit Gang were to encounter the same disaster, would you be willing to give the treasures in your hands to your subordinates so that they can defend against the enemy? Would you give the medicinal herbs that can save your lives, not to yourself but also the people around you? Can you help the injured men and rush to the front to take the lead? No, you can't do that. All you can do is run. Everyone else was silent. Envy continued to say, I'm not accusing you of anything, because that is the way the world works. It's because of that that Black Moon Castle makes me feel so different. If they can survive this disaster, I'm sure they will become a great force that will shake things up in the kingdom. I prefer to follow them than to return to the Demonis Church as a bandit. Envy did not think there was a need to choose between a force that valued loyalty and would give her a limitless future or return to the days when she needed to sneak around. All right, I can't be bothered to say anything more to you. I'll put it this way you are free to take advantage of Black Moon Castle's crisis today. But I won't agree to do the same. So, if you want to do it, you'll have to do it over my dead body. Chapter 144, Watson's Trump Card You guys decide do you want to be my enemy or stop temporarily? Envy stared at her silent companions and asked with a serious expression. I'm terrified of you. Forget about being your enemy. You're right. Black Moon Castle is indeed a force worthy of respect. I give up. The young girl, Lust, raised her hands first. What about you guys? Envy turned her head. I don't plan to do anything either, Sloth said. Finally, it was greed and wrath. They looked at each other and sighed at the same time. Then. Greed said, you want me to use money enhancement to speed up the recovery of those wounded, right? I can do that, but I don't have much money on me. Can I get Black Moon Castle to give me some gold coins in advance? Greed wanted to refute what Envy said, but she knew that she was right. When she was in the Demonis Bandit Gang, she did not think about how to revive the Demonis Church but how to become stronger. Perhaps the only people who really wanted to revive the Demonis Church were their leader, Pride, and the former Queen's Maid, Envy. With that thought in mind, Greed looked at the busy maids and the knights on the ground as they tried to heal their injuries. She thought that those people were foolish. They risked their lives for others. They were already a silver tier elite, and as long as they lived, they would have a bright future. Yet, they chose to risk their lives. If that were not stupidity, then what was that? At the same time, those people dazzled in her eyes. She had lived for herself all her life, 
and she had been greedy for everything. That was the retribution for her greed. However, she had limited ability, and she could only hold so much in her hands. If someone could give her everything, then she would be satisfied. She did not know why every injured Black Moon Knight had a satisfied look on their face, there was no regret at all. Outside Black Moon Castle Watson hovered in the sky, he panted heavily, and his clothes were wet with sweat. His head was in excruciating pain, and his every nerve trembled. He had used up all of his magic in that ten minutes of battle with the astrologer. He did not remember how many times he had cast spells. He only knew that the battle was not over yet. In the distance, the primordial demoness projection was fighting the rock giant. Every time the eyeball on the primordial demoness body moved, any mage from the mage guild who could not dodge in time would be petrified. However, the chaotic eyeball on the projection moved very slowly. It only moved once every few minutes, and the primordial demoness projection became illusory. That was proof that the projection was about to disappear. The primordial demoness ability was mainly petrification, which was ineffective against the rock giant that was made of rock. The rock giant's drill-shaped arms spun rapidly as they drilled holes on the primordial demoness body, which accelerated her dissolution. The Golden Flash and Emperor Cluck were also near Watson. They were so tired that they bowed on the ground, especially the Golden Flash. The magic that they had used against the astrologer was mainly released by the Golden Flash. Even though it had become a Platinum Dragon King, it had exhausted all of its strength in such an intense battle it had become weak. Most of the Black Moon Knights were injured. However, some were severely wounded, and some were not. Under the efforts of the maids in the castle, no one had died yet. Watson felt a little desperate at that point. Would the Black Moon Castle get destroyed that day? If he gave up, he was confident that he could leave with his family and a small number of knights. However, he would have to leave the remaining people there. If he wanted to survive, he would have to give up the lives of his subordinates. Was that really a good idea? Watson already had the answer in his heart. Therefore, when he saw the astrologer's large magical words in the sky, he immediately responded. If he wanted a fight, then Watson would fight him. They could either live or die together. Furthermore, he still had a useless trump card. As he thought about that, Watson placed his hand on his lower abdomen. The magical elements in his body had been exhausted, but the magical source of the chaotic elements had increased. It was not meaningless to choose to fight with the astrologer as long as it did not exceed the capacity limit. The magical source of the chaotic elements could absorb any spell. The magical source of the chaotic elements had already stored the power of a platinum tier champion. Since it had absorbed the aftermath of that platinum tier spell, that power had increased by ten times. Watson was confident that that power was enough to destroy the Mage Guild's alliance. The magical source that had reached the Platinum Tier could absorb a complete Platinum Tier spell, and it would not exceed the limit. When the Astrologer had released Platinum Tier spells, Watson had not absorbed them directly because he wanted to give the opponent an illusion. It was a false impression that it was difficult for him to resist a Platinum Tier spell. If he absorbed the spell directly, his opponent might become cautious and not release any more spells. For that, he could only let the Black Moon Knights make a small sacrifice and share a part of the pressure. The situation of the battle was all within his plan. Let's continue. Before the outcome of the battle is determined, try to absorb as much energy as possible to ensure that the balance of victory is tilted to my direction. He felt that the energy of ten Platinum Tier Elites was still not enough, he needed to absorb at least twenty of them before it was safe. Watson watched as the primordial demoness projection in the distance gradually dissipated. The Mage Guild had begun to move toward the Black Moon Castle, Watson calculated their distance. Three kilometers. One kilometer. Five hundred meters, they were very close. In the direction of the Mage Guild. Audrey and Ron walked to the front. At that moment, Ron had already deactivated his ice field wolf form. As he looked at Black Moon Castle that was in front of him, as well as Watson, 
who hovered in mid-air with a face that was even more exquisite than a woman, he muttered to himself, I can't believe that Black Moon Castle's mysterious platinum tier elite is a child. Or is he an adult, but his body is relatively short? I've heard of a type of demi-human called a dwarf, they are born shorter than a normal person. Ron felt that his state of mind had collapsed. As a gold-tier warrior, he had been able to command the world in Monty Town. He did not expect to die in Black Moon Castle. There were dozens of silver-tier warriors in Black Moon Castle and even some platinum-tier elites. If it were not for the astrologer's arrival, they would have died if they were the only ones attacking Black Moon Castle that day. He had not received any news of such a powerful force appearing at the border. Is it important who the other party is? Audrey replied nonchalantly, her gaze was locked onto Watson's face. That woman-like face was extremely familiar to her. There was no mistaking it, it was the Great Sin Mask, and it was quite a complete mask. Audrey shouted in her heart. When the Demonist Church was still around, she was one of its believers, so she had seen a complete Great Sin Mask. The mask on the young man's face was almost the same as what she remembered. She did not expect someone from Black Moon Castle had not only obtained the Great Sin Mask, but they had also restored it. That was something that she had wanted to do for more than ten years but had never been able to do so. What a pleasant surprise! Even though she was delighted, Audrey did not show it on her face. Ron, there's no need to talk nonsense. I'll give you a mission. Later, no matter the status at Black Moon Castle, our primary goal is to capture that youth in the sky. If you can't capture him alive, then you can bring me his head. The reward for the mission is 1,000 gold coins. She had wanted to get someone to sneak into Black Moon Castle to capture their master. However, she could not see anything else once she saw the Great Sin Mask. That person is a platinum tier elite. Do you want to send me to my death? Ron was a little displeased. Don't worry. He had fought the astrologer for so long, so his strength is almost exhausted. Can't you see that he's panting like an ox? Furthermore, we're so close to him, yet he hasn't released any more magic. Audrey observed Watson carefully and waved her hand casually. Ron, if you're still worried, I can get my subordinates to attack first. Leonard, you're a silver tier mage. You'll be the one to test the opponent's strength. Chapter 145, Doubtful. President, why me? Leonard's face turned bitter when he heard that. The other party was a platinum tier elite, while he was only a silver tier mage. Even if their opponent were exhausted, it would be easy for him to kill Leonard. Besides, Audrey only guessed that the other party was exhausted. Who knew if he still had some strength left in him? I'll leave that matter to Anna. Isn't Anna the strongest fire element mage in the mage guild? I'll agree to give that title to her. President, she should do it. Leonard, you old fox, why don't you say what you mean? I think you want me to die. Anna was unhappy about that. It was not bad to receive the honor of being the strongest fire mage in Monty Town, but that would only mean something if she were still alive. If she had died, then no title would matter. She did not want someone to write strongest fire mage on her epitaph after her death. Why don't we give it to Martin or Hilbert? Anna thought for a moment and continued to say, Doesn't Martin like you, President? As for Hilbert, his title is the unbreakable barrier. He should be able to withstand the opponent's magical attacks. Anna, who said that I like the President? You can't say such things carelessly. Martin defended himself nervously. He did like Audrey, but he could not say it out loud. Furthermore, he felt that his life was more important than his feelings. Hilbert simply closed his eyes and stood at the side like a small mountain, he pretended to be asleep. He seemed to be deaf and could not hear anything. Enough. There's no need to argue. Leonard will be the only one to test the opponent. The rest of you, follow me. We'll sneak into Black Moon Castle. After such a long battle, the people there should be exhausted. 
as long as we control the upper echelons of the castle, we'll be victorious. Audrey's face was cold, and her voice was unquestionable. Her idea was simple. Leonard would attract the other party's attention while the rest would split up and sneak into the compound. It looked like Black Moon Castle had a few platinum tier elites. No matter their strength, they would not be able to stop so many people at the same time. Furthermore, the astrologer was with them. If something were to go wrong, the astrologer would not sit by and watch. Leonard, why aren't you taking action yet? Are you dissatisfied with my arrangements? When she saw that Leonard did not move, Audrey's expression turned dangerous. Earth yellow magical elements began to gather around her, it caused the air around her to become heavier. No, President. Why would I be dissatisfied? I'll go now. Leonard's expression was solemn as he walked toward Black Moon Castle obediently. He looked as if he was ready to face death. Well, he did feel unhappy, but there was nothing he could do about it. He was not Audrey's match. She was a gold-tier mage, and she was skilled in two types of magic. One was dark elemental magic, and the other was a variant of earth elemental magic gravity magic. If he agreed to Audrey's request, he might die later. If he disagreed, then he would die right there and then. Lord Astrologer, is that arrangement all right? Audrey ignored Leonard, she turned to look at the astrologer. Yes, let's do as you wish, Audrey. The astrologer nodded and panted slightly. He felt a little tired after that intense battle. It was an excellent time to let the juniors test if their opponent still had any strength left. Ron, you don't have any objections, right? If not, please take action. Even though it was a question, Audrey's tone was more like an order. I understand. Ron agreed unhappily. It seemed like Audrey wanted her subordinates to be cannon fodder with him. What a ruthless fellow. However, since the astrologer had spoken, what could he do? He could only accept the command. After the tasks were assigned, Audrey and the remaining thirty mages from the mage guild followed behind the astrologer. They used their magic separately and approached Black Moon Castle separately. Ron also ordered his guards to spread out, they broke through the compound from another direction. Dozens of people spread out and looked for a suitable time and place to attack. Leonard, who was at the front, looked behind him with an increasingly bitter expression. It seems that I have been completely reduced to cannon fodder. I wonder if I can survive this. Even though the surroundings of Black Moon Castle were riddled with holes, the castle was on the verge of collapse, and there were less than thirty guards still active, he felt a sense of danger in his heart. The closer he got to Black Moon Castle, the stronger the feeling grew, especially when he saw the handsome youth who hovered above the castle. Leonard swallowed his saliva subconsciously. He felt that the other party was looking at him as if he was prey. It was as if the young man was waiting for him to fall into his trap. Watson looked at the older man who had walked about a hundred meters in front of Black Moon Castle. He was in a grey robe, and a pointed hat sat on his head. His grey and white beard swayed gently under his chin, and he held a magic staff in his hand. He looked like a standard mage, and he looked very powerful. Of course, that kind of power might seem significant to ordinary people, but to him, it could only be considered moderate. They sent only one person here, did they abandon him? How pitiful! Even though he sympathized with the man, Watson knew that he would not affect him much, so he did not pay any attention to that man. Instead, he focused his attention on the people behind the man. Other than the platinum tier mage who had just fought with me, there is still one gold tier mage, two silver tier mages, and about thirty bronze tier mages. One gold tier warrior, three silver tier warriors, and about twenty bronze tier warriors. All of them are too far away to be dealt with in one go. Since that's the case, let's deal with the strong ones first. As Watson calculated, he suddenly noticed that the white-bearded old man who had walked to the vicinity of Black Moon Castle, he had begun to chant a spell. It seemed to be a silver-tier spell. Fire elements wandering between heaven and earth, 
please obey my summons and condense into exploding flames. Silvertear spell successive exploding fireballs. The old man chanted a spell and raised his staff to point at Watson. A string of massive fireballs immediately flew in Watson's direction. The fireballs were as big as wash basins, and the high temperature of hundreds of degrees burned through the air. Watson was puzzled. What? How did that person who looked like cannon fodder attack him? How did he dare? He did not attack the man because he wanted his opponent to let their guard down, and he did not want to expose the fact that his chaotic elemental magic source had stored a large amount of energy. However, since he was attacked, it seemed like it was against the rule if he did not counter it. Watson raised his right hand, he wanted to activate the chaotic elemental magical source to eliminate the old man in front of him. However, he saw a scene that surprised him. After the old man cast a spell, he did not even look at the result. He turned around and ran away as he shouted, President Audrey, I have completed my mission. It seemed like the mysterious elite in Black Moon Castle had depleted his energy, he did not even dodge my attack. Their knights and dragons seemed to have lost their strength as well. Come over here, quickly. It was as if a big question mark had appeared above Watson's head. He was confused. It was not only him, but it seemed like the Golden Flash and Emperor Cluck, who were resting by his feet, also raised their heads to look at the commotion. Their huge eyes were filled with confusion. Even the injured knights scratched their heads. It was true that they were injured, but why did that man say that they had lost their strength? Where did that old man come from, and why did he spread such fake news? The people from the Mage Guild were excited when they heard that. Two bronze-tier mages even deviated from their original direction. They no longer approached the Black Moon Castle. Instead, they went to Watson and began to chant spells. The Platinum Tier Elite from the Black Moon Castle is finished. Then, why are we still sneaking in? We can just kill him directly. They heard that President Audrey wanted Watson's head, and she had offered a high price of 1,000 gold coins for it. It was an excellent opportunity that did not come often. Soon, two Bronze Tier Fireballs went straight for Watson. Watson lowered his raised hand and allowed the explosive fireballs to hit his body. He used the magical source of the chaotic elemental to absorb them. Then, he looked at the person in front of him as if he was looking at a fool. It seemed like he did not need to make a move. He had a better idea of how to deal with the people in front of him. Chapter 146, No Need to Attack Leonard retreated as he looked behind him. When he noticed that two bronze tier mages had turned their heads and started to cast spells at Watson, he cursed silently in his heart. Idiot! He had struck Watson on the orders of President Audrey. He started fleeing without even looking after he had attacked. That was due to the fear he felt in his heart. He had a strong feeling that if he attacked Watson at that time, he would be fatally wounded. The truth was not dissimilar to what he had anticipated. The silver tear spell he had cast, a chain of exploding fireballs, landed on Watson's body. It was like a stone sinking into the sea it was absorbed quickly. The spells cast by the two bronze tear mages were also absorbed. Watson stood in the sky as he looked at them. He did not counterattack, as if he lacked the strength to do so. That scene did not pique Leonard's desire to fight. It instead caused his hair to stand on end. His ominous sense of despair grew stronger. He used to be a hunter in Monty Town before becoming a mage in the Mage Guild after his magical talent was tested in his teens. Outstanding hunters would usually show weakness to their prey before catching them. They would kill their prey after they let down their guard. If those idiots believe that the opposing party is easy to bully, then let them go. I do not think I will be able to complete the mission that the President has assigned to me. He only wanted to get out of there as soon as possible. He did not mind who carried out the mission as long as it was not him. Soon after, he dashed to the door near Black Moon Castle, right in front of Audrey. According to my observations, President Audrey, the opposing party has lost his combat capability, indeed. 
it could not even withstand our mage's attacks. I believe that now is the best time to attack Black Moon Castle. He lied about everything. However, he did not give a hoot about it because he needed to survive. It was better for others to die than him. Do you understand what you are saying, Leonard? Audrey was infiltrating the Black Moon Castle. When she heard Leonard's words, she narrowed her eyes and fixed her gaze on him. You already know how much I despise liars. You have not even used your full strength yet, and you already know the enemy has lost his fighting ability. Leonard's face froze, and he quickly explained, I was able to make such a judgment precisely because I did not use all of my strength. I did not even dare to fight back because I was not using my full strength. Does that not show that the other party has lost the ability to resist? Leonard Audrey was about to say something when Ron cut her off. Audrey, you said you would give me a thousand gold coins if I killed the youth in the sky. Is that right? Ron had stayed by Audrey's side for his own safety after she had asked the astrologer about the battle plan. Audrey would never lie to him. If anything were to happen, he would be sure to be by Audrey's side. He could not hold back any longer after he heard Leonard's report. He was not an exceptionally bright individual. Despite being the largest mercenary corps in Monty Town, he knew that the Northwind mercenary groups only had tens of thousands of gold coins and savings. The 1,000 gold coins represented one-tenth of their total assets. Furthermore, he had witnessed Leonard's attack and the subsequent attacks of the Bronze Tier Mages. Watson had only resisted the attacks, not retaliated. Even a Platinum Tier Elite who did not know how to retaliate would be a target. Of course, I'm a man of my words. Audrey turned to look at Ron with a strange gaze. I shall accept that mission. There's no need to say any superfluous words. You should prepare the 1,000 gold coins. Ron turned around after he said that. He spread his snow-white combat aura wings and flew straight toward Watson. Idiot. Audrey made a snide remark. She had only wanted to scold Leonard because she was well acquainted with him. He was as astute as a fox. He had to have discovered some danger because he ran back so quickly. Only a fool like Ron would be fooled. Of course, she did not have to stop Ron from going on his own initiative. I will settle the score with you when the matter is over, she said as she glared at Leonard. Audrey took the initiative to approach the astrologer and said respectfully, You have not made a move, Lord Astrologer. Instead, you have been standing around, staring. Do you have any ideas? The astrologer had been following her and stroking his beard ever since she had devised the battle plan. His gaze was fixed on the young man atop the castle. She had no idea what he was looking at. Her original plan had been to destroy Black Moon Castle. Then, she desired to learn how the youth reassembled the Great Sin Mask. Perhaps she could persuade the astrologer to assist her in completing the mission. If she could get information from Watson while he was alive, she certainly did not want to get it from a corpse. I am looking up at the child in the sky. Amazing, truly amazing. To be a gold tier mage at the age of 10. He appears to have also cultivated a combat aura. His achievements in the field of warriors are also not insignificant either. That kind of talent is something I have never seen before in my life. The astrologer's deep eyes shone as he looked at Watson. His right eye was brilliant gold, and his left was milky white. The Eye of Insight was a gold tier spell that could detect the enemy's information. He had not used it when they had exchanged blows earlier because they were too far apart. He used it when they were close to see if Watson had indeed lost his combat ability, and he had discovered something very interesting. Gold tier? Audrey did not seem to believe what she was hearing from the astrologer. That young man fought you for more than ten minutes. He has the potential to be a platinum tier mage. What makes you think he is gold tier? When was it appropriate for a gold tier warrior to engage in combat with a platinum tier elite? It was not an exaggeration to say that a platinum tier elite was equivalent to a hundred gold tier elites. Aside from the fact that the dragon in that castle cast the majority of those spells, 
a person's strength is dependent on a variety of factors. If a gold tier mage has a lot of magic in his body, then it is not unusual for them to cast a platinum tier spell. But the power of the spell would be weaker. Then there is the use of potions to boost one's strength quickly or enhance a weapon. There are as many options as one requires, the astrologer explained patiently. He noticed a short figure standing above Black Moon Castle as he cast a few kilometers away. He had assumed it was a dwarf or a demi-human, but only after seeing it up close did he realize he was mistaken. The Eye of Insight could see not only the flow of magic elements and combat aura in a person's body but also their bones. In his eyes, the young man's body was wrapped in different colored lines. That was the path of the combat aura and magical elements in his body, particularly the abdomen. The color looked intense, as if it concealed terrifying energy. Snow white bones were hidden beneath the colorful lines. The bones in the youth's body were thin and fragile. They were still in their infancy and belonged to a child. It was possible to fake one's appearance and age, but not one's bones. The astrologer found it difficult to believe that the person who had fought him, the kingdom's oldest and most knowledgeable mage, for so long was actually a child. Should he try to recruit him? When he discovered the mage who had altered the world's structure, he had two thoughts. The first was to recruit him, and the second was to kill him. After learning that Watson had killed a silvertier mage in Monty Town, the decision to kill him had sounded better. However, the idea of recruiting Watson became appealing when he realized his opponent was a child. At his age, he was already a gold-tier mage who could cast platinum-tier spells. If they were to nurture his talents, perhaps he could reach diamond-tier in a period, or even starlight-tier. The astrologer's breathing was labored. He had been alive for hundreds of years, and his strength would last the rest of his life. He could train a disciple and add to his illustrious titles. He saw Watson as a world treasure. He could not take his gaze away from him, so he cleared his throat and said thoughtfully, Audrey, please call off your subordinates. There is no need to continue fighting for the time being. Audrey was dumbfounded. Chapter 147, One Hit Kill are you serious, Lord Astrologer? Did you not agree to my battle plan? Why did you ask me to stop so abruptly? Was he aware of any danger, or did the Astrologer have a better plan? She was unable to recall their opponent's platinum tier elite. Oh, he was a gold tier elite. He must have been completely exhausted. Was it not the best time to attack, as the dragon and guards in the castle were all exhausted? The mysterious platinum tier fighter in her heart had been demoted to gold tier, which relieved a lot of the pressure in her heart. No matter how powerful a mere gold tier elite was, they could not turn the world upside down. Do you have any doubts about my words, Audrey? Audrey felt her body tensed as the astrologer's eyes narrowed and his voice rose slightly. An invisible force seemed to be pressing down on her from all sides. She immediately bowed her head respectfully. Lord Astrologer, I would not dare. I shall contact my men right away. Audrey did as she was told, even though she was muttering in her heart. She waved her right hand in the air and released an earth yellow magic ball. The magical ball exploded in a burst of brilliant light. That was a retreat signal explicitly created for the battle by the Mage Guild. A group of mages and soldiers from the Northwind Mercenary Group retreated to her side when they saw that signal. Only Ron, who had just rushed out, did not return because he had already run to Watson's location. Lord Astrologer, Ron does not appear to have seen the signal I sent out. Do you want me to contact him again? No need. When confronted with the question, the Astrologer waved his hand and stared at Watson as if he were looking at an unpolished piece of jade. Allow Ron to try. In any case, he will never be able to defeat that child. It just so happens that I am curious to see how much potential that child has. Even though he was astounded by Watson's talent, he was still hesitant. After all, the battle had just raised more than half of Black Moon City. If Watson were envious of him, it would be akin to raising a tiger to make it stronger. The astrologer seems to admire him very much. 
Audrey clenched her fists silently and pursed her lips as she realized what he meant. She prayed for Ron to kill Watson. That way, the astrologer's astrologer's blame would have nothing to do with her, and she would be able to get what she desired. She did not think much of the astrologer's prediction that Ron would not be a good match for Watson. She was aware of Ron's strength. He had a 40 to 60 chance compared to her. A warrior could barely compete with a mage of the same level, but he possessed exceptional talent. Watson was only a gold-tier elite. He must have used some unique method to be able to demonstrate the strength of a platinum-tier warrior. Furthermore, he was already exhausted. He was no match for Ron. Audrey looked up at the sky to console herself. Watson hovered in the sky as he observed everything in front of him with cold eyes. He had seen the Mage Guild scatter and break free from the siege of Black Moon Castle. He had been nervous, debating whether or not to release the magic accumulated in the source. Finally, the other party sent two or three people to send a round of magic at him before they retreated. It is fine if I let them attack me. It doesn't really matter. I still have the ability to store more energy. Just as that thought entered Watson's mind, he noticed the other party reassemble. Only a burly and attractive man with snow-white combat aura wings on his back approached him. Did he want to fight him? He had no idea what the other party was thinking. Meanwhile, the man with the snow-white wings had arrived more than ten meters ahead of him and was peering down at him from above. Are you the most powerful person in that castle? Please tell me your name. My name is Ron, and I am the Northwind Mercenary Group's leader in Monty Town. I am also Monty Town's strongest gold-tier warrior. I hope you will remember my name because it will be the last name you will ever hear. Ron took the long knife with the carved wolf head and slung it over his shoulder. Snowflakes condensed around him and slowly rotated to form a storm. Watson looked at Ron when he heard that. He deduced that the person was one of the enemy's rare gold-tier warriors. It was worth it for him to make a move, destroying him might lower the enemy's morale. In Ron's opinion, Watson only gave him a passing glance before he moved away. He did not say anything, as if he was disgusted by him. That irritated him a little. He was a gold-tier warrior. The person in front of him should at least say something to show his respect. He could also use harsh words, such as you can't kill me, you'll be dead or cut the crap, come and fight. The child did not say anything, did he think he was farting? Since you haven't prepared your last words, then I can only say I'm sorry. With a cold snort, the combat aura wings on Ron's back flapped, and the long saber in his hand turned into a snow-white stream of light that streaked across the sky. Since you have not prepared your final words, I can only say that I am sorry. Ron snorted coldly as the combat aura wings on Ron's back flapped, and the long saber in his hand had transformed into a snow-white stream of light that streaked across the sky. Gold Tier Combat Technique Ice Dragon Roar The snowflakes around Ron thickened and floated around him and formed a long ice-colored dragon. No one knew when a dark cloud had appeared in the sky and blocked the sunlight. There was a roaring dragon beneath the dark cloud, and the temperature had dropped a few degrees. When one's combat aura was cultivated to its utmost, it could also have magical effects. For the first time, a gold-tier combat aura could change the weather. When the Mage Guild and the Northwind Mercenary Group saw the attack, they gasped. They were taken aback. The Black Moon Knights in the castle appeared to be nervous as well. Watson, however, did not allow them to act. They would not act recklessly as knights with strict discipline, no matter how anxious they were. Ron looked around from the corner of his eyes as he released his combat skills. He was pleased with everyone's reaction. After all, Watson possessed the strength of a platinum tier elite, so he was extremely cautious. In that attack, he did not hold back. If he were lucky, that attack could cut off Watson's head and give him 1,000 gold coins. Only the Golden Flash and Emperor Cluck, who were on the ground, raised their heads and looked up. They lowered their heads quickly and yawned sleepily. That person is equipped with a gold-tier battle technique. 
his weapon appears to be gold tier as well. It seems that we can't kill him directly. Watson noticed Ron rush up to him after he said those words, and his gaze was drawn primarily to the fighting technique Ron had unleashed. Despite being a gold tier warrior, his combat aura had been upgraded due to the fusion system, and he lacked a decent fighting technique. He had planned to wait until he was familiar with Nightingale before learning a few moves from her. Since Nightingale was summoned away by the border count in a hurry, it seemed like that moment was a good time. If Ron knew Watson was thinking about that when he was under attack, he would be furious. Watson extended his right hand toward Ron. The source of chaotic magic, activate. A massive shadow of an evil eye appeared behind him. It emitted a grey light that shot straight into the clouds. The dark clouds in the sky were dispersed because of Ron's appearance. The huge pillar of light was connected to the sunlight, and it formed an illusory symbol of the primal chaotic element in the sky. It was surrounded by six smaller symbols that represented earth, fire, water, wind, and darkness. It's coming the new element that changed the world. At the location where the mage guild had gathered, the astrologer's hand on his beard suddenly stopped. He yanked a few strands of his beard, and his eyes widened with delight. The thing that the youth had not used during the battle with him was about to be used. That magic does not appear to be weak. I have heard that whenever a new magical element is created, it gains the favor of its source. The reason that youth could cast platinum tear spells must be related to that source. I wonder if his platinum tear spells correspond to that element. The astrologer believed that witnessing the birth of new magic was akin to seeing the dawn of a new era. Whether he would kill or recruit Watson depended on the strength of his magic. There was no need to enlist Watson if it was a simple magical element. Ron rushed in front of Watson with his fighting technique while he was deep in his thoughts. Under everyone's watchful eyes, the long ice-colored dragon wrapped around Ron's body collapsed inch by inch. It quickly devolved into nothingness, as if the world were a blank canvas and Ron was a drawing. An invisible and massive eraser was wiping the colors in the image to create a strange and terrifying scene. Everyone there widened their eyes, they were unable to make a sound. A few seconds later, the eraser finally brushed against Ron's body. The snow-white wings on his back disappeared in an instant, and the skin on his body seemed to have been wiped away. He spat out blood and flew straight in front of Watson, who grabbed him by the neck. It had only been a few seconds since Ron had attacked and restrained. It was only one move, and the outcome had already been decided. Chapter 148, The Fusion of Peak Fighting Techniques Silence The whole of Black Moon Castle was deafeningly quiet. Nobody expected Ron, who had used a gold tier fighting technique, to lose so easily to Watson, who had done nothing at all. Watson was like a god, with a huge illusory eye behind him. He gripped Ron's neck even tighter. Everyone, including Ron himself, thought he was going to kill him. Watson made a startling remark that caught everyone off guard. Your gold tier fighting technique is impressive. I will spare your life if you hand over all of your fighting techniques. Oh, and there is that knife, too. Watson snatched the long knife carved with a wolf's head from Ron's body as he spoke. He stuffed it into his spatial pouch on his waist without even looking at it. Ron fought hard to open his blood-splattered eyes. There was only a trace of shock and fury in his eyes. What surprised him was Watson's ability to maintain such powerful strength after such a grueling battle. What irritated him was Watson's lack of respect for him, as if defeating him was purely for the weapons and fighting skills he possessed. It meant that his life was meaningless without them. He felt as if he had been insulted once more. As a warrior, it was sometimes more important to maintain one's dignity than to live. Roar. He opened his mouth and roared. Ron's body suddenly expanded, and snow-white hair emerged from his body. His blood-stained muscles were covered with a layer of white skin. His head had also changed from that of a human to that of a ferocious wolf. Watson's hand was instantly opened when his neck thickened several times of its original size. Ron's transformed ice-field wolf howled into the sky before crashing to the ground. 
the earth shook as sound waves rolled out in all directions. The black moon knights, among others, frowned in pain when they heard the sound. The wolf king's power was unstoppable. Ron's aura had become ten times stronger after transforming into a magical beast. His strength and speed had been greatly improved in that form. That was the last time he would fail. Ron's silver-white pupils, which had transformed into a giant wolf, looked fiercely at the sky as he turned his head. Suddenly, he was taken aback. Watson's eyes were rapidly magnified as he floated through the sky. When he turned around, the other person had already arrived above his head and punched him. What are you yelling about? Roar. Still shouting. Roar. Will you woo? If you continue to shout, I will smash your head into pieces as long as I get the battle technique that you just displayed. I will ask you again will you give it to me? His fists carried a fierce fighting spirit as they landed on Ron's head. They smashed Ron's massive wolf head with punches after punches, causing it to sink deep into the soil. The back of Ron's head had caved in. Ron's cry changed from heroic to pitiful, and the Wolf King had transformed into a husky in an instant. Watson sat on his body after punching Ron a few times to ensure he could not get up. I am going to count to three. If you do not give it to me, I will kill you on the spot. Three. Warriors may die on the battlefield, but they will never beg for mercy from the enemy. Ron's giant wolf shook its head with difficulty. It opened its bloody mouth and spoke in human language. 2. Kill me if you have the ability. The astrologer is standing right next to you. He will not let you go if you kill me. 1. F asterisk CK, why are you counting so fast? I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you, all right. When Ron realized Watson was about to raise his right hand and murder him mercilessly, he quivered. He spat out a ball of light containing two secret manuals from his mouth. One was the Ice Dragon Roar, a gold tear fighting technique, and the other was the Snowfall Breathing Cannon, a gold tear fighting technique. He had spent a lot of time and money gathering those two secret manuals. The first was a fighting technique he could use in his human form, and the second was a fighting technique that allowed him to utilize his beast form fully, but Watson beat him up before he could use it. Watson took the secret manual and looked at it in front of him. Gold Tier Fighting Technique Ice Dragon Roar Effect, releases superior ice elemental battle aura, condensing into an ice dragon over 10 meters long, dealing a large amount of damage to those below gold tier. Additional effects, freezing, causes frostbite and freezing effect, weakening draconic aura, simulates an ice dragon with a certain degree of stunning effect. Gold tier fighting technique snowfall breathing cannon. Effect, accumulates a large amount of ice elemental combat aura in the body. After releasing it, it can form an overwhelming snowflake waterfall, the power is enough to destroy a small mountain. Additional effects, charge up. With an increase in brewing time, the power will gradually increase, splash, damage will be received outside of the attack range. The damage will decrease as the distance increases, dot. Watson could not help but feel pleased after looking over the two battle techniques. Even among gold tier elites, those two battle techniques were top notch. The higher the technique's level, the more prone it was to magic. Furthermore, it was not the same as magic. Despite the limited range, it was simpler and faster to use. Even if you steal my battle techniques, B asterisk starred, it will be useless. Both of those battle techniques are from the ice elements. If you do not master the ice elemental combat aura, you will not be able to learn it even if you get it, Ron mocked from below Watson. Also, I have given you everything. Can you let me go now? He was humiliated to be defeated by Watson in front of everyone. Who says I don't know the ice elemental combat aura? Watson glanced at Ron. Since he was in a good mood, he decided to explain a little more. Even if I don't know the ice elemental combat aura, I still have a way to learn those two battle techniques immediately. What a joke. If you can learn those two battle techniques in an instant, I'll... 
When Ron heard that, he laughed sarcastically. He had spent a few years honing those two skills. Those gold-tier battle techniques could already use combat aura to trigger changes in the world. Every move had a fixed trajectory, and remembering them took a lot of conditioning. No matter how talented Watson was, it was impossible to learn gold-tier battle techniques in a few months. What are you going to do? I'll call you father on the spot. Please remember what you said. System, fuse it for me. Those words rang in Ron's ears as he was still in a state of disbelief. The two secret manuals Watson held in his hands then transformed into light balls, fused, and entered his body. Congratulations, Master. You have successfully fused two gold tier fighting techniques. You have obtained the peak gold tier fighting technique, Thousand Blade Ice Soul Blade. Peak gold tier fighting technique Thousand Blade Ice Soul Blade. Effects, condenses a platinum tier ice blade by your side. It can cut through anything. It can also take the initiative to split the ice blade into countless tiny pieces and reassemble within a hundred meter radius around your body. Additional effects, armor penetration, attacks part of the opponent's defense, freezing, sturdiness, penetration, can pass through any tangible or intangible material, dot. Additional skills, when attacking, can summon ice dragons and ice wolves to protect the body. Watson's palm made a sound when he raised his right hand. A layer of icy blue ice crystals appeared from his fist, gradually spreading to his arm and continued to extend. A platinum-colored long sword appeared in his hand shortly after that. The sword's blade was razor sharp, and an ice dragon and an ice wolf tangled on the hilt, roaring at each other. It was a startling sight to see. Not bad. With the combined fighting skills, it's equivalent to me mastering three gold-tier fighting skills at once. When I encounter close combat or fast attack situations, it's more convenient to use fighting skills than magic. Those three fighting skills make up for my shortcomings to a large extent. It is not bad. It is the equivalent of me mastering three gold-tier fighting techniques at once. When I am in close combat or need to attack quickly, I prefer to use fighting skills rather than magic. These three skills can make up for a lot of my shortcomings. Whoosh. Watson only waved his hand lightly on the ground. After the ground cracked open, the cold air gathered above. A ten-meter-long iceberg appeared out of nowhere, several meters in height. The iceberg's tip, like a sword piercing the clouds, pointed toward the sky. Ron could not say anything sarcastic after he saw that scene. He had practiced ice elemental combat aura and knew how difficult it was to create a massive iceberg with it. He did not expect Watson to say that he had mastered ice elemental combat aura. What surprised him even more was that after Watson created the iceberg, he snapped his fingers. The ice dragon sculpture that extended from his arm immediately flew out and roared in the sky, that move was like the gold tier battle skill, ice dragon roar, that he had just used and it was even better than his. Even more surprising to him was that after Watson created the iceberg, he snapped his fingers, and the ice dragon sculpture that extended from his arm flew out and roared in the sky. The move was nearly identical to the gold tier battle skill he had just used, the ice dragon roar, but it was even better. He really learned my battle skill. Ron's eyes widened as he struggled to find the right words to say. He had learned someone else's move just by watching it once. That person in front of him was some kind of monster. He wished he had not listened to Audrey's words. No matter how weak Watson was, he could not stand a chance against such a terrifying monster. The fact that Watson had looked at him with a cute face after he had used his fighting technique was the thing that he regretted the most. Sir, did you not say you would call me father as soon as I figured out your battle skills? You can start now. Chapter 149, Be My Disciple Not only did he instantly pick up other people's fighting techniques, but he also mastered them and improved the quality. Such ability is truly. After witnessing what Watson had done, the astrologer outside Black Moon Castle could no longer remain calm. It was already shocking enough to create new magical elements that did not belong to the world. 
his levels of achievement in the cultivation of combat aura were also impressive. The kingdom had rare geniuses who could cultivate both magic and battle aura simultaneously, but their accomplishments were modest, given that a person's energy was limited. It was preferable to concentrate their efforts on one of the two. In the astrologer's opinion, there had not been a second person in the kingdom for hundreds of years as good as Watson, who had achieved extremely high achievements on both sides. That kid's talent is far beyond my wildest dreams. It would be a pity to kill him. For a brief moment, the astrologer smoothed his beard and considered his options. Young man, let Ron go, he said as he walked to the sky slowly until he stood opposite Watson. We have been at odds for quite some time. How about a truce? Truce? Watson shifted his gaze to the elderly gentleman in front of him. The old man exerted terrifying pressure on him. That was the first time he had felt anything like that since arriving in that world. It was as if the person in front of him was a tall mountain or an ocean rather than a person. They call me the astrologer. I believe you already know that. The astrologer's expression became more and more benevolent, previously, I heard that you killed an elder of the mage guild in Monty Town. Old man, I thought that you were some extremely evil person. That's why I came to annihilate the Black Moon Castle. But now, it seems that I misunderstood. Your talent is outstanding. Staying in such a remote place like the border is a complete waste of your life. How about it? Do you want to be my disciple? I heard that you killed a mage guild elder, the astrologer said, his face seemed benevolent. I was under the impression that you are evil. That is why I have come to destroy the Black Moon Castle. However, it now appears that I have misunderstood. Your talent is exceptional. Staying in such a remote location like the border is a complete waste of your talent. What do you think? Would you like to be my disciple? Yes. As soon as the astrologer spoke, the crowd immediately gasped, especially the people from the Mage Guild. They were well aware that the astrologer had spent hundreds of years in seclusion in the Sky Temple. It had been a long time since he had left the temple, let alone accepted a disciple. Many nobles, including the royal family, begged him to let them become one of his disciples, but the astrologer had always refused. The astrologer wanted to accept a small, unknown child from Black Moon Castle as his disciple. The mage's eyes flashed with envy as they looked at Watson. Audrey locked her gaze on Watson and bit her lower lip. She was enraged as well as jealous. Even though Watson's talent was incredible, she did not believe the astrologer would be interested in him. Audrey's heart skipped a beat when she saw Watson pick up Ron's battle technique so quickly. Who could possibly remedy such a monstrous talent? No one in the kingdom would be a match for him if she let him go. She had to nip that danger in the bud. Audrey was anxious, but she did not dare to attack Watson in front of the astrologer. Watson burst out laughing just as she was trying to come up with a solution. The astrologer? I've said it before, I do not give a d asterisk mn who you are. Let us fight if you want to fight. If you want to stop fighting, then I'm sorry. I won't agree. Black Moon Town had been destroyed because of the astrologer. The Black Moon Knights would have died as well if it had not been for the fact that he had exhausted most of the castle's resources to keep them safe. On the other hand, the astrologer had expressed his admiration for him and expressed his desire to accept him as a disciple. Everything the astrologer had done up to that point had been to see if he was qualified to be a disciple. The border uncle had used the manor owner's allied forces to test him, and it was only natural for him to sacrifice the lives of innocent people to achieve his goal. The law of the jungle was a habit in that world. He was different. He advocated for equality for all as a modern transmigrator. He had always despised the way powerful people did things. Furthermore, since he wore the Great Sin mask, his emotions were easily agitated, and he could no longer control the fury in his heart. The astrologer's breath came to a halt as Watson spoke. He did not seem to anticipate that someone would reject his request. The Mage Guild's other members were equally stunned. 
they had not anticipated Watson's refusal to agree and even his rudeness toward the astrologer. He must have been too fed up with his life. They did not expect Watson to flicker in front of the astrologer after he finished speaking and released the battle technique he had just fused. Peak Gold Tier Battle Technique Thousand Blade Ice Soul Blade He reached out and grabbed at the sky with his hand. The roaring ice dragon in the sky immediately shattered into countless dazzling ice crystals. The distance between them was a few fingers as they scattered and connected again. At first glance, it appeared as if there was an invisible force holding them in place, but it quickly transformed into a long ice sword that was over 10 meters long. Watson swept across with the ice sword's end in his hand as a ring-shaped ravine appeared on the ground. The sword aura spread the ice storm and caused solid ice to form quickly on the ground. The thousand-blade ice soul blade in Watson's hand had already appeared in front of the astrologer and wrapped him in a spiral-shaped light. As a fighting technique on the verge of platinum tier, the power of the thousand-blade ice soul blade was that it could change according to its master's thoughts, making it difficult to grasp. Wandering earth elements, listen to my call and solidify into an indestructible shield. Silver tier magic earth barrier. Four thick stone walls erupted around the astrologer, shielding him from the outside world while he attempted to destroy the thousand blade ice soul blade. Time was of the essence, so he could only use silver magic to deal with it first. However, when confronted by his defense, the scattered pieces of the thousand blade ice soul blade quickly transformed into tiny ice elemental particles, drilling through the defense's cracks and reassembling them into the shape of an ice blade within the defense. A cold light flashed, and the four stone shields were cut off from the inside with a swoosh. White frost had smoothed out and solidified the broken edges. The astrologer was no longer there. A massive magical array appeared beneath his feet, and he emerged from nowhere dozens of meters away. A wisp of white beard fell as he touched his beard subconsciously. His head would have fallen as well if he had not retreated quickly. He must have gone crazy. Everyone in the mage guild pressed their brows together. Watson was not joking when he said he wanted to kill the astrologer who had made it clear that he wanted to recruit him. How dare you! The astrologer thought highly of you and was kind enough to take you in as his disciple to guide you. You did not appreciate his kindness, and you even wanted to kill him? You also killed an elder from Mage Guild, slaughtered some of my companions from the former Demonist Church, and stole treasures that belonged to me. People like you vicious and evil shouldn't exist in this world. Audrey shouted loudly. She had been worried that the astrologer would refuse to kill Watson, but she was no longer concerned. The President is right. I urge you to destroy that ignorant kid, Lord Astrologer. The other Mage Guild members followed suit. Are you sure you do not want to be my disciple, brat? It's my fault for destroying your home, consider this as a way to pay off that debt. Stop. Consider your options carefully. What's in it for you to continue fighting? The Astrologer was not angry even though Watson had hurt him, he was even more interested. Watson's ability to injure him only served to highlight his immense potential. He had only two pastimes in his life. One was to conduct new magic research, and the other was to train disciples. Watson happened to be the only one who had both. Watson chuckled. Facing the astrologer's words, Watson smiled. He turned his head to look at the Black Moon Iron Knights who had been standing still in the Black Moon Castle since the beginning, everyone. Tell that mage from the kingdom, what is the rule of our Black Moon Castle when dealing with enemies? Watson smiled when he heard the astrologer's words. He turned his head to look at the Black Moon Knights who had been standing still in the castle since the beginning and asked, Everyone, tell that mage, what is the rule of Black Moon Castle when dealing with enemies? The first evil must be killed, and the last evil must be exterminated. Kill. 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 The Black Moon Knights roared at the top of their lungs, blue veins appeared on their necks, and their voices shook the sky. Did you hear what I just said? Watson's grin faded. You have invaded my home, and you are my enemies. No matter what you do or say, that will not change. As long as you are my enemies, you must die. 
Kid, do not be so arrogant. The astrologer gave way to you. You would have, if you hadn't, Audrey stood in front of the mage as she fanned the flames on purpose. She was eager to incite the astrologer's wrath so that he would kill Watson. You talk too much. With a swoosh, Watson's eyes were cold. He used the teleportation ability unique to gold tier warriors and disappeared from midair. He appeared in front of her. A cold light flashed. Before Audrey could react, a cracking sound came from her face. Watson's eyes were cold with a swoosh. He used the teleportation ability unique to gold tier warriors and disappeared from midair. He appeared in front of her. A cold light flashed, and before Audrey could react, a cracking sound echoed from her face. Chapter 150, A Complete Great Sin Mask Crack A layer of a transparent mask as thin as a cicada's wing split into three translucent pieces approximately the same size on Audrey's face. They landed right in Watson's hands. Give it back to me. Audrey arched her brows bitterly. Then she extended her hand in an attempt to compete with Watson. Watson brandished his thousand blade ice soul blade. The blade, made of ice crystal shards that shone like diamonds, cut through Audrey's waist with a dull thud. Audrey was swept back by the powerful force, and her gorgeous mage robe was slashed open, revealing her fair skin beneath. As he grabbed the transparent mask, Watson's eyes immediately saw its attributes. Silver Tear Special Item, Great Sin Mask Pride. Effect, Able to Withstand Attacks from Gold Tier Elites. Side Effect, The host's emotions will become very volatile after wearing it. Additional Effects, Judgment, Determines a person to be guilty and inflicts damage on him, causing him to suffer great pain, immunity immune to any non-lethal damage, dot. Additional skill, protection of the evil god. As one would expect from the final and most powerful piece of the Great Sin Mask. These two abilities are unrivaled by the other components of the Great Sin Mask. As long as he judged that the other party was guilty, the other party would have to bear the consequences. It had nothing to do with physical strength. Even if he were up against a diamond or even a starlight tier elite, as long as he forcefully determined that the other party was guilty, they would not be spared. As one would expect from skills from pride that was a very proud ability. Watson looked at Audrey and saw that she was not hurt as he laughed in his heart. She must have used her immunity ability when he attacked her. His strength was above 10,000 caddies due to his frequent consumption of rainbow phoenix chicken eggs. The combined power of his gold tier combat aura and the peak gold tier combat technique he had just obtained was considerably beyond that of an ordinary gold tier warrior. It was not even close to Audrey's ability, demonstrating the power of her immunity skill. As long as it was not fatal, he would not be injured. Audrey turned to face him and said, Give me my mask, kid. Not only my mask but also the mask on your face. The Demonist Church owns the Great Sin Mask, so it also belongs to me. That universe revolves around me. Any activity that is detrimental to me will result in repercussions. I hope you will follow my advice and not be resentful. Audrey's expression darkened as she touched her bare cheek. Her motivation for attacking Black Moon Castle was to reclaim the Great Sin Mask. She had no idea Watson would steal her mask instead. Yours. Watson scoffed at Audrey's words. I only know that the things in my hands are mine. I think you're courting death. Earth elementals that wander the world, please listen to my summons and give sinners heavy shackles. Gold tier earth elemental magic, super gravity. Audrey chanted quickly, and an earthy yellow ball floated from her grasp. She flung it at Watson. The earthy yellow ball emitted a terrifying gravity and earthy yellow light. Wherever the yellow light covered, the space around it distorted. The earth got quite heavy. The ground began to collapse and sink in a radius of dozens of meters. Layers of circular fractures emerged on the ground, with Watson at the center. He had no expression on his face as he felt his body become dozens of times heavier. The abrupt rise in gravity would be enough to cause his body to collapse if he were a simple mage. He was still a warrior, though. 
his strong physique and the fact that he was in gold-tier armor weakened the effect by more than half. He raised his hand, and then there was a thud as he was about to counterattack. Not far away, the astrologer pounded on the staff in his hand, and Audrey's enchantment vanished, it became invisible. The astrologer walked to Audrey's side and stopped her from continuing her attack. Audrey, I've told you. You're not allowed to attack that youth. Lord Astrologer, he took my things. He Audrey was furious. She did not want to attack either, but Watson had taken her things. If the person standing in front of her were not the Astrologer, she would not be able to suppress the anger in her heart. Forget it. It's just a mask. After the Demonist Church was destroyed, the Great Sin Mask had already been reduced to pieces. That mask can be used as compensation for the damages caused by our invasion of Black Moon Castle. The astrologer consoled her softly before he turned to look at Watson. Young man, are you satisfied with my arrangements? I've shown my sincerity. I think we can sit down and have a good talk. He had shown his intention of stopping the war. Since he had given up on the Great Sin Mask, Watson should be able to calm down then. I have nothing to say to you. Watson extended his right hand in answer to the astrologer. A horrifying surge of chaotic elemental magic spilled from his right hand, transforming into a grey river that surged toward him. Boom! A dozens of meter long deep gully was blasted into the ground. In pain, the astrologer and Audrey retreated dozens of meters. The astrologer was fine, but half of his beard was gone. Audrey looked much more miserable, and more than half of her clothes had been washed away, leaving only a few scraps of cloth to cover her womanly parts. Audrey's face turned hot as she felt the scorching gazes of others around her. Her entire body trembled as she reached out her hand to hide herself. She was pride, and being seen naked was a massive humiliation for her. What are you all doing standing there? Kill that little brat as soon as possible. If that little brat does not die today, I am going to kill you all. Yes, President. The Mage Guild and the Northwind Mercenary Group did not dare to gaze at Audrey. Their expressions were somewhat conflicted. They had some regard for Watson at that moment. He had refused to budge on the truce proposal in the face of the astrologer's continuous attacks. Such tenacity was all too rare in that world. Stubbornness, on the other hand, would frequently lead to disaster. Audrey. Audrey's loud voice stopped the astrologer's speech, she said, Lord Astrologer, that is enough. I understand you value that child's feelings. You are a well-respected senior in the kingdom, and I respect your decision. But think about it carefully. Is he deserving of your care? He has not even become your disciple yet, and he is so rude toward you. Will he become even more arrogant as he grows stronger under your care? If he were to become a diamond tier elite, I believe he would even assassinate his majesty. Audrey's words caused the astrologer's eyes to flicker. He's a child, after all. It's normal for him to have such a temper. However, you are right. If I were to nurture someone who would ultimately harm the kingdom, it would be my negligence. He had been attacked by Watson a few times so the astrologer was a little angry. He had already bowed his head and attempted to calm the child. Watson simply did not appreciate his generosity. Was it not only an invasion? He could rebuild the town if it were destroyed. Was it necessary to be that angry? Did he genuinely believe the astrologer did not care about his dignity? The astrologer raised his head. He could not hide his feelings of sympathy and he wanted to kill Watson for being so disrespectful even though the young man was extremely talented. Watson did not even look at them, instead, he picked up the mask he had taken from Audrey's face and said, Fusion system, activate. As his voice faded, the shattered transparent mask turned into a beam of light and flew onto Watson's face. It caused Watson's face, which looked more beautiful than a woman, to emit a holy light instantly. A platinum-tier powerful aura descended on him. At that moment, the Great Sin Mask had finally been reassembled. Am I seeing things? 
That kid has restored the great sin mask. The astrologer's pupils constricted. He knew that Watson was wearing the great sin mask. He had seen it from the moment he arrived. Back then, the king had ordered the extermination of the Demonis Church, and he was one of the participants. After the great sin mask had shattered, the king had ordered many artisans to repair it. In the end, no one in the kingdom was able to do it. The item that no one could fix had been restored in Watson's hands. The astrologer took a deep breath, reached out, and pressed Audrey's shoulders that heaved in anger. Audrey, I think that we still have to consider whether we should attack that youth or not. Not only could he fuse battle techniques and improve them, but he could also repair weapons. Watson had a talent that he had not heard of, and he could not bear to attack him. Lord Astrologer Audrey's eyes reddened. If the astrologer had not held her down, she believed that she would have jumped up in anger.